Hey, good morning to you. Welcome back to Morning Live. We get into your Formula One sport right now. So Red Bull's Max Verstappen is now officially a three-time world champion after what has been a very dominant season once again, which has um, him as well as his teammates coronated early with races to spare. To help us talk about this, we are joined on Zoom by brilliant Formula One of mind, Sasha Martiningo. And joining me in studio, we've got Lufefe Maegi. So... Sasha, good morning to you. Good morning, Lefefe. How are you? Morning. I'm good, thank you. How are you? Sasha, I want to start <laughs> this interview with you because in Formula One, we've had periods of dominance by a certain um, Ferrari. We've seen Mercedes in the past and now we've seen Red Bull. Many have said that this type of dominance is not good for the sport. I mean, some have kind of followed the beginning of the season and fallen off because we just know it's going to be another miss, Max Verstappen victory. What, what do you make of this and, and those that say this kind of dominance is not good for the sports of Formula One? Well, listen, first of all, very good morning. Um, this is the nature of Formula One. It has been like this uh, since the start. If you go back to the 1950s, you had Alfa Romeo, then you had Maserati, and then going on, you had Williams, you had McLaren, you had Ferrari, you've had Red Bull, you've had Mercedes, and now we have another, uh, an astonishing um, time with Max Verstappen and uh, Red Bull. It is the nature of Formula One. Um, it all depends on what side of the fence you are. If you're a Red Bull fan and Max Verstappen mm. fan, you're loving every second. If you're a Mercedes fan or Ferrari fan or McLaren fan, um, it's not a great time. But that's the nature of Formula One, and especially when we have new regulations, um, they do find some parity as uh, we go along. So I think uh, Red Bull might as well enjoy this as long as it lasts because um, Formula One changes very quickly. You speak about for as long as it lasts. We know that Red Bull have already started working on their car for next season. Do you think this is going to strengthen their grip in terms of dominance moving forward? Well, listen, they've got an unbelievable vehicle this year. Adrian Newey and his team have created something astonishing. Um, and it's caught everybody else um, unawares. But um, I think going forward, I think teams like Ferrari, Mercedes, McLaren, Aston Martin are, have all done their homework and all realised what they need to do in terms of uh, trying to catch Red Bull going forward. The deciding factor um, for all of the other teams is one person, and that is Max. Verstappen. This kid is uh, an incredible racing driver, perhaps one of the greatest um, we've ever seen in Formula One already. Uh, and as we speak about Max Verstappen, Lefefe, let me bring you into the conversation because yes. we know that Red Bull has an amazing car and, and Sasha has touched on that already, but in the past three seasons, there's only one Red Bull driver that has won these races and that is Max Verstappen. Are we giving Max the credit that he deserves? Or are we just saying, no, it's just this Red Bull car, it's amazing, and not giving credit to the driver behind the wheel? Well, success in F1 is always based on the combination mm -hmm. of the car and the driver. Obviously, the team behind him as well. So Red Bull, over the last decade, where they, were, they had fallen behind and Mercedes were dominating, were actually showing signs that they will be the team that ascends when the change of God comes. I say this because if you look at their pit stop strategies, their chassis of their car, I mean, Adrian Newey is the best designer I think F1 mm. has ever seen. So it's expected that um, the Red Bull would come to where it is now with Max Verstappen leading the charge. So I think in terms of comparison with him and his teammate, he's in a class of his own within the team. Mm. So there's no contest between him and Sergio. As a result, in my opinion, I don't see Sergio racing for Red Bull beyond the season. Oh, you think this is the end of Red Bull and Sergio? I do think so, Where do so, you yes. see him going? Oh, it's going to be tough. I think the only seat that might be vacant is Logan Sargent's on at Williams. Otherwise, I can see Liam Lawson, the rookie who's filling in for Daniel Ricciardo, taking that Red Bull seat next year. Uh, uh, this is very interesting. Um, Sasha, what is your vo viewpoint on this? Uh, are you agreeing with Lufefe that this may be the end of that relationship? I, I think he brings up an incredibly valid point. Um, Sergio Perez, the last four races, has been uh, dismal. Um, and uh, I think there are going to be some serious conversations, most probably started even last night after the celebrations or will start today between Sergio and, uh, and Red Bull. 
Going forward, if you look at this combination at McLaren uh, with L Lando Norris and Oscar Piastri, I mean, these two guys are just fantastic. Probably the, the best um, pairing on the grid at the moment. Mm. And they are pushing each other. And as brilliant as Max is, Max does need a teammate who's going to be able to push him, especially, I think, going into 2024. So I think there are going to be some serious discussions going forward. And um, Liam Lawson may, might be a little bit uh, too tender to go and take that role at Red Bull. But even though uh, Lando Norris has a serious contract with uh, McLaren, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Red Bull go and approach uh, someone like Lando Norris to team up with uh, Max Verstappen. I think we could see some interesting musical chairs going, uh, going over the next um, uh, couple of weeks and months for 2024. That's very interesting because a lot of people, I think, at the beginning of this season or were kept on saying as well, maybe we need to see Lewis Hamilton also moving away from Mercedes. Maybe that's the problem at the moment. But Lefefe, let's talk about Aston Martin. What do you make of the season that they've had? Because they seem to have a good start and almost uh, plateaued. Yes, uh, Aston Martin, I, I would say for the first half of the season, were the surprise package because they went from seventh to being, say, the second best team mm -hmm. in the early parts of the season. But they failed to progress with the upgrades because obviously during the course of the season, all the teams, they do upgrades. They think, I think they get three tokens each to do upgrades during the course of the season. But uh, Aston Martin have just fallen away. And what we've seen, like Sasha has said, is the ascendance of um, McLaren, mm. who have you know, closely matched young, hungry drivers. And now we've seen them make the most progress, um, I think, of all the teams this season. And it has been really interesting. And you know what they say, gentlemen, time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> because unfortunately, we have come to the end of this interview. But Sasha, thank you so much. It's always lovely catching up with you. I'm hoping we'll have another catch up as we wrap up the season, even though we already know who the winner is. And <laughs> Lufefe, it was great to have a discussion with you. Same, same <laughs> for you. Same, guys. All right, so there we have go, Sasha Martininga, as well as Lufefe Maigi. So talking all things Formula One, we officially know that Max Verstappen is now a three-time world champion champion and Red Bull continues with their dominance. Let's take a quick break now. When we come back after the break, we get you up to date with your morning headlines and all your favorites right here on Morning Live.